beautiful creations of God. This is who made me. This is where I'm from. And this is who I am. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I make it a mission to encourage the body of Christ. Hello everyone. How are you doing? How is the pandemic still treating you? I hope all my prayer warriors are staying strong, 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 strong in the Lord. Today, what I want to talk about, because we need to... I'm on fire today and... I don't know if you can keep up with me, but we're going to get into this topic. So lately, this is just, I guess, I'll say like a little testimony of what I've been feeling. So lately, and it did, and by the way, this starts very small. Like you can start recognizing these things, start like slowly forming little by little, little by little. Like it can be like taking years or a couple months or a couple of weeks and it starts forming little by little until it becomes this big huge thing and then you gotta Lord you gotta let the Lord tackle all this thing. So before we get into this thing, so that's what I'm here for. Before you get into this huge big ball of mess that you and the world are gonna go through, let's start recognizing those little 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 things that are forming to be to so that it, it's, it's this whole entire big mess so lately what i've been feeling is that like i feel like i was just so unworthy like i'm not perfect well nobody's perfect but i don't know why we i believe that in a sense where like i feel like i have to, i have to do this and this and this amount of thing to make sure that like yeah okay i'm good or I feel like I have to basically look up to other people. Even if I feel unworthy, I have to look up at these people. I'm like, okay, well, at least they have it. Or I know I'm never going to have this, so I'm in this state all the time. And it could be in different different areas of my life. Like if it's in my study, I feel like I'm not worthy. I'm not smart enough. And I, I'm wasting so many times. I'm not like basically being strong in my in my studies. If it's in like relationship aspect, which I don't have. I'm not in a relationship, but I still feel like I'm unworthy. I'm never going to be I'm never gonna fully satisfy this person. I could clean, cook, clean the house, cook, have the degree, have the job, have everything, but I still feel like I would never be able to fully satisfy the person that God is preparing me for. I could, in uh, my spiritual life, I could basically feel the God could tell me over and over, could sit in front of my eyes right now, in front of me, could tell me over and over again, Samira, I love you, I love you, which he does, right? I love you, I love you, he loves you, like, he could be saying that, in, like, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one thinking about this, he could be saying that to you right now, I love you, daughter, I love you, my son, over and over again, but yeah, we would still never believe it. Why is that? Why is that we let the thoughts of god like his his loving words drown in the lies of the enemy drown the lies that the enemy is feeding us why is that it is so like it's so draining like it is so draining no matter what area of your life it's spiritual it's in your studies um it's in yeah like your school your studies if it's in your relationships if it's in um like if it's in your work, any areas that like you feel like you got to take every single shift to make sure that you'll be okay, but the Lord is your provider. Why? You feel like you have to go the extra mile all the time in your work because you feel like you, you because you think like you'll never, um, because you want to attain this certain position that maybe the Lord does not have that for you. Like you feel like you have to do everything in your relationship to keep it safe, but and deep down, it's really rooted in that you're not fully satisfied in Christ. Or that person is not fully satisfied in Christ. So they're making you do so much. So much. Why is that? No, brothers and sisters. We cannot live in that state. When the Bible tells us in Romans that there are um, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that he has given us a new, a new creation, a new creature to... New, new creature. Really? Basically, a new body, a new creation to live in. We need to believe in that and we need to walk in that mindset. No longer can we believe the lies of the enemy. Because when we believe the lies of the enemy, what, what, what is he going to... I'll tell you exactly what he will do. He'll feed you with so many lies. you start to feel unworthy. you start to feel like you're not enough. Then that's going to cut out your time with spending your time with God. Because you'll be like, well, I'm not enough. I'm not worthy. So why am I you know, spending so much time? Why am I even going to read this Bible? Or why am I even go going to pray? You start to slack in. You used to pray every single night, but now you don't even pray anymore. You used to read your word 
every single time, right on time, spend the time with God, but now you don't do that anymore. Why is that? You used to so, like, you used to be so on fire for God, but the enemy snatched that away and filled it with so many lies. Why is that? Recognize these things, brothers and sisters. It's not just, oh, I'm just not feeling it today. No. It's not, or, uh, you know, like, I'm just thinking where the Lord can. No. What you're doing is you're creating so many loopholes, so many holes in your life that the enemy can infiltrate in. And I, like, and, and I know, you know, it's, 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 it's so hard. It's so hard. But I'm here to encourage you. God has given you a full armor. In Ephesians 6, verse 11 to 18, or verse 12 to 18, actually, when the Bible tells us that God has given you a full armor, do you know these? Do you know the tools that God has given you? Do you, do you believe them? Do you use them? When the Bible tells you that he has given you the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, do you use it to combat the lies of the enemy? When the Bible tells you that he has given you the belt of truth, meaning any lies of the enemy that comes in, you have the belt and the solid foundation in Christ. Do you use that? Your salvation as helmet, meaning that do you know that your sins are forgiven? He has crucified your sins on that cross. Do you believe that? Or do you still run in the cycle of, well, I, I still feel condemned in this condemnation cycle? Like, brothers and sisters, the enemy is attacking. Attacking very, very, very hard. And it's, it's, it's draining because now we don't have any more strength, especially for running on our show for, God, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I swear I'll be, I'll, I'll, I'll be good this time or I'll, I'll, I'll spend more time this time. Or I'll do this, I'll do this. No. The Lord gives us strength. We need to rely on the Lord's strength and not our own strength because our own strength will fail us, especially the times that we do need it. That's why we run to God. That's why we think, when the Bible tells us to think of the, um, of the thoughts that are pure, admirable, and lovely. Yeah, because we don't want to entertain any evil thoughts of the enemy. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you, do not slack. If you used to read your Bible verse every night or every morning, go back to that. If you read, if you used to pray every morning, every night, throughout the day, go back to that. If you used to read your Bible on time, you create a special time now. You create how you used to create the special time to read your Bible, but now you don't. You say, oh, I'm too busy, or oh, I, I got so many things. The Lord understands. Yes, He understands, but He knows that the spending time, the time that you need to spend with Him is essential for you. Go back to that. Don't stack no more, because when you stack, the enemy has a foothold in your life. The enemy is, he's, he's, like when the Bible tells you he's a roaring lion seeking to see who he wants to devour, he studies. He will study you. He will know exactly. He's like, oh, okay, so I see you got this new job coming in, huh? Oh, it looks like a full-time job. Oh, I see you get this new project. You want to take extra shit. He will use that to make you, to basically make you slow down in the time that you, you used to spend time with God. He, will, he studies you. He studies you. And knowing that, we have a responsibility, brothers and sisters, to fight, to fight the good fight. And to, when the Bible says, to, uh, sorry, I have the verse over here, um, and Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Like, how many times throughout your week you be like, mm, God, I, I wish I could be spending time with you right now, but this will homework. Hey. But this, but this, but this, this, this work I gotta do. But this guy I gotta talk to. 
like so many lies that the enemy is just feeding us. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And our flesh, the mind, the Bible says that the mind um, focus on the flesh leads to death. And I say this all the time. It's not just like physical. It's physical death, emotional death, mental death. All the above, like all that you can think of. You feel numb. You feel unworthy. Or your mind, you just feel so, like, you get to this state of darkness where you feel so depressed. Like, the enemy recycles so many lies. He will bring up your past. Like, you, like, you, you think that, you, God, you, you saved me from this. You, you healed me from this. We, we went to therapy sessions for this. And it comes back over and over again. Why is that? Do you not believe the truth and the words of God? Now, when the Bible tells you in Psalms 139 that his thoughts, like his, when, like God thinks of you like 24 seven plus more. And those thoughts outnumber the grains of sand in the sea. Like what? What? Like I, I am loved by God. I am, like, God loves me. God loves you. He loves you. He thinks of you every single time. He's there right with you. And the difficult times and the happy times and the when the moments is feel so rough and the crisis, he's there with you. He thinks of you all the time. So why do you feel like you're not loved? All the, all the enemy is going to do is just bring up your past, make you feel unworthy. That's not love. The enemy doesn't know how to love you. You think, oh, yeah, I got into this relationship. This is it. Yeah, whatever. No. That, that feeling of that, that, that lust, that person is not going to fully satisfy you. Like, I am so tired of the lies of the enemy that keeps like he I, like he feeds me with so many lies and when I'm not in the state where I um I like I'm relying on God's strength, I can easily brothers and sisters I can easily fall into those lies. I can easily believe these things and be like, yeah, like like what am I doing? Like I'm I'm not worth it. Especially if you come from a background where all you gotta do is just work, work, work. Like you, you, you can start to believe that you, that your work makes you worthy. But no, that's not what God tells you. He formed you in your mother's womb before, before you got the job. God loved you, sis. Before you got the job, God loved you, brother. Before you went to school, God loved you anyways. Before you got that diploma, God loved you. Because before you start making before you started to make six figures, God loved you. He loved you. He loved you when you had nothing. And he still loves you when you have when he has given you everything. He loves you. He loves you. Like, I'm going to repeat that for you. If you don't believe that, if you don't believe the words, I will repeat what the word, God loves you. For God so loved the world. So he goes, he leaves the 99 and goes after you. You that is feeling so unworthy. You that is feeling so depressed. You that's feeling that you're drowning in so much emotional, physical, whatever it is. He loves you and cares for you. I've said this many times. We most of some of us have you know parents that that are in the faith and they, they pray for us, especially when we are in the world. And some of us are still in the world or are still lukewarm and they're still praying for you. But brothers and sisters, there's gonna come a time when your mom, your dad, your uncle, your aunt is not gonna be there to pray for you anymore. Like what are you gonna do? When your parents are not there for you, you have the responsibility to pick up your fight. And it's not to say that, oh my God, I'm all in this all alone. No, because God equips you. God, he's, he's equi he has equipped you. He's going to be there for you. 
before, after, during. He's going to love you. He's going to take care of you. He's going to be there with you. But you still got to choose. You still got to choose to follow him. You still got to choose to stand up. You still got to choose to pick up your sword. You still got to choose to put on your salvation as a helmet, your belt of truth, your breastplate of righteousness, your shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You still got to choose to pick up those things. Just because the Lord has made, he's not, like, we have to take these tools. Take hold of these tools. Use them in the times that we need them at all times. Because at all times we're going to need them. It's not to say, well, when I'm, you know, when I'm weak, I'm going to use the tools that God has given me. No. Like, even in your happy times, you still got to pray. I'm sorry. The verse in Matthew 26, 41 does not say watch and pray when you are weak. Watch and pray when you are happy. Watch and pray when you're feeling sad. Watch and pray when... No, it says watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing the flesh to so That's at all times. That is at all times. That is at all times, brothers and sisters. When you feel happy, when you don't feel happy. Satan doesn't care about your feelings. He's going to attack you whether you like it or not. And you got to be ready. You got to be ready. I'm sorry you don't have it. You don't have it easy. I, I, I'm sorry if somebody lied to you that they said this would be easy. This would be the life. It is the life, but nobody said it's easy. Jesus had not had it easy. So how much, like, like we, as his followers, he didn't have it easy. Even in his words, in this life, you will have many trials. Spiritual, physical, emotional. Like, let's not just categorize what trials is. Emotional, spiritual, physical, and all the above mentally. You will have trials, but what? Take heart. Hey, take heart or take courage. Why? Because he has overcome the world. And the Bible tells us that we have a, we don't have a high priest that is unable to empathize with us. Because why? He went through all these things, all these trials. Everything you can think of, Jesus went through it. But yet he did not sin. That is why he's able to help us in times of need. That's why we run to Jesus. The Bible doesn't tell you to run to Jesus for no reason. Huh? It doesn't tell you to fix your eyes on Jesus for no reason. It's not, oh, okay, Jesus, I look at you, I'm thinking of you. No. Do you believe in your heart? With all your mind, all your soul, all your heart? Do you believe it? Do you believe that he is able, God is able to take you out break down any strongholds in your life do you believe in brothers and sisters and these times that we're living in like it, everything is increasing why because we're coming closer to the return of jesus Everything is increasing. Spiritual warfare is increasing. Whatever you see in the world is increasing. Hello, like, how many things were like, what is going on in this culture? What is wrong with our society? Well, yeah. We're getting closer to the return of Jesus. And you gotta take it. You gotta take your sword, brother. You gotta take your sword, sister. You, you have to, you gotta pick up your, pick up the tools. Nobody's gonna do it for you. You gotta willingly say, yes, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to submit to you. I want to take up these tools that you have equipped me to combat the lies of the enemy. To combat whatever is going on. Some, some, some people... 
the enemy attacks him through physical illnesses. So the enemy attacks him through emotional, emotional, like draining. Like there's, I don't know about you, but there's sometimes that you feel so drained emotionally that you forget you have a body. Like, I like I don't know about you guys, but whenever I feel drained emotionally or mentally. Forget about me having, like, physical body. Like, at this point, I don't think I exist anymore. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you get to this place where it's so empty. It's so dark. It's, like, so dark and so empty, and you're so alone. You feel so isolated. That's where the enemy wants to keep you. But that's not where Jesus wants to keep you. He rose. If he rose from the dead, if he rose from the dead, it means there's hope for you. He has the he has the keys to death. He has the hell and like he has all these keys. He has stolen all these keys. Jesus has defiled history. He has defiled every single thoughts, every single feelings that you're feeling right now. He has defied them all. <sighs> I know. I, I know it's hard. It's hard. It's it's tiresome. I like there's like there's times when you're like, I don't wanna do this, Lord. Like I'm tired, I'm drained. Every single thing I every single time I look at the world or you know, like I'm from Haiti, so every single time I look at the state of Haiti, it's like Lord, like you just you break down, you cry, you're, you're, you're so drained. You're like, God, what is going on? Like, why are these, why, why are these things happening? And it's like, God, you said you would be there. You would be present. Where is your presence? I've been to this. I, I've questioned so many things. But like my elder likes to say, God, I don't understand. But I trust you. We will never understand what is going on in our lives or in the lives of our families or friends or whatever it is. But that is no excuse to not trust God, huh? That is no excuse to not believe Him or anything. Because the enemy will use the circumstances happening in our lives to tell you, see, God's not there. God's not real. Like he'll he'll use it. He will he he tried it. And he will try it again. Okay? Like he will use it so many times. But God is not determined by our circumstances. Our circumstances do not dictate the characteristic of God. God is all loving, all righteous, gracious, merciful. He could he could have easily taken me out today. He could have done the same thing for you taking you out. But he chose to keep you going despite your disobedience. <laughs> despite whatever you're thinking, but despite whatever you're going through in life. He said, no, you're still worth it. I will still give breath to your lungs. And that's not love. That's not love. Oh, I have you mistaken God's love for whatever you see on TV shows or whatever you see in the world and in your society and your culture? We are so imperfect humans you know we do mistakes and if it's not by the renewed spirit of god and us by our new creation we will do like we will do and say so many wrong things but take heart take courage for god has overcome the world huh God is good, guys. He is really good. He loves you. He cares for you. 
He wants the best for you. He has the best for you. God's plan is always good. Even when you don't understand it, you're stuck in the middle. God's plan for you is always good. So we're going to wrap this up in prayer. I hope I wasn't too all over the place. Guys, I hope you got one thing out um, of this, this, this unfiltered. I like doing these things, unfiltered videos. Um, but yeah, okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for, for your goodness, for your strength, for your love, for your mercies, Lord. Lord, there's a lot happening in our lives, Lord. Whatever is happening in society, whatever is happening in our culture, what is happening in the world, we see it all and we feel it all. But just because we see it, just because we feel it does not mean, Father God, that that is you. Lord, you're not, you're not determined by our circumstances. And the enemy will try to distract us, Lord. The enemy will try to drain us, Lord. But I ask, Father God, in these times, Lord Jesus, you may fully equip us with your full armor, with the helmet of salvation, our breastplate of righteousness, our belt of, sh of, of, uh, of truth, our shoes of peace, of the good news, our shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Help us to believe you, Lord Jesus. Help us to think and to trust in you that no matter what, in whatever circumstances, Lord. Hold our hands, Lord. Even when we want, we want to let go, hold our hands, Jesus. Give out the spirit, the spirit that is willing, Father God, for our flesh is so weak. Lord, I pray over everyone listening under the sound of my voice. That you may give them the new strength, Lord. You say you are, you are the one out of the power of our strength, Lord Jesus. You say, Father God, that you will give us strength. We will mount on the wings of eagles, Lord, and that you will, we will run and our glory, we, Father God. Give us your strength in these times. Lord, in whatever circumstances my followers, Father God, are going through emotional, physical, mental, Father God, may you be a present help for them. Give them and show them the exit way, Lord. Help them to always focus and to stay, Father God, help them to stay focused on you in whatever circumstances. In Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Sorry if this was long, brothers and sisters, but it was very needed. Um, if you like this video, make sure that you share it with um, with your family or with your friends. You like and you comment and you subscribe. Um, and if you want to connect with me, my Instagram is always in the description box below. All for the glory of Yahweh. Um, and I pray that the Lord gives you strength throughout this week. In Christ Jesus. Amen. Bye. Love you all. Mwah.